um, get ready to do that. Some of you know that I was able to uh, spend some time talking with the Kaleo students, not just our students, but uh, all of the students, uh, kind of at the, uh, where, we, where the pastors and other church people got to meet them. And this is a picture of them on the recent hike uh, to Mount Albert Edward. And uh, I heard they had an amazing time. Uh, they got very wet. And unfortunately, they weren't able to summit uh, the mountain. But um, that happens. You take your chances on Mount Albert Edward. I'm looking forward to being able to climb up that mountain one day myself. When I was, um, when I was uh, at Camp Qantas with the Kaleo students, it brought back some memories of when I was their age. Um, I was in Budapest in Hungary. Uh, I went there when I was 19 years old, and I turned 20 just a few days after I got there. And I may have mentioned that was one of the hardest times in my life. Uh, many of you have heard me say that's where I found out that missionaries are people too. In other words, they have problems just like we do. They have to grow up and become better humans and, and more like Jesus too. Uh, I lived with a man who struggled with depression. I didn't know that uh, going over there, uh, discouragement. And so it was challenging. It was difficult. But there was also many enjoyable times too. I can remember once I got the bus system figured out, um, I would go downtown uh, along the Danube River. And uh, there was, you know, some large hotels like the Hilton and others. And I would just stroll in like I knew what I was doing and belong there and sit in one of the couches and uh, read my Bible or be in my journal. And it was just to listen to English. Like it was so hard to hear English. You'd be on the bus and it'd be a Hungarian and it's a beautiful language. But sometimes it's just wonderful to hear your own language as well. I want to uh, read you a, a page from my journal. Oh, just a second. First of all, I just want to hug all you guys. There. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Evan. Beautiful. This is, a, this is a poem that I wrote in November of 1989. And uh, I'm quite the amateur, but I just wanted to share this with you. I wonder if I will be there then when nature's gold is green. Or shall I take the wing month, once more and home and things unseen? To see this place at such a time would do my heart quite fair. My God must do a work in me and I must live by prayer. Some say they envy me this chance to go abroad. They don't know the half of it to give it such applaud. But God is good and he is just. To us he'll never fail. I've seen it time and time again, and so I say, all hail. That's how I was feeling in November of 1989, and, and life was difficult. In all, in all of it, God was giving me peace. And even as I wrote in my journal and, and, and kind of penned that, that poem, like the psalmist before me, I went from discouragement and maybe even to some despair to crying out to God in worship. All hail, that simply means everyone, call out in worship. And in the midst of that storm in my life, God gave me peace. And much of that peace came when I was seeking my relationship with God, uh, spending time in his word through my relationship with him in Jesus, our Messiah. Well, let's, uh, Let's uh, read our, uh, let's say our verse again together, okay? Let's see if I can do that. Here we are. So uh, those of you in the building, um, I don't know if you're allowed to talk. Are you guys allowed to talk? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Let's all say this together. Let the shalom of Christ, our Messiah, be your heart's decision maker. Since as parts of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the peace of Christ let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. When life smacks you in the face, when you've made poor choices that come back to bite you, let the peace of Christ reign in your heart. And even when you have a good but a hard decision to make, we've talked about some of these things. 
Where does God want me to go? How am I supposed to navigate this new relationship or this relationship that we've had for a while? What's the next step? Who's the best person for me to spend time with? And even things like opportunities to serve. Maybe there's four or five different things and and you need to narrow those things down and, and that can be a challenge. Which way does God want me to go? I was speaking uh, with someone from our church family this week. And even though this person is going through a challenging time, I was struck by the, the peace that this person had in Jesus, our deliverer. And that for me was a highlight of my week, seeing that. I was uh, speaking to another man who is uh, separated from his family right now. And to hear the peace that God was giving him was very encouraging. Friends, when you and I are seeking to be obedient to what God is showing us, when our heart's desire is to honor him, it's not so much about the decision that we end up making. It's not so much about the way that we go. It's about having a peace about it because Jesus has been our heart's decision maker. He's ruled in our hearts. He's called the shots. Jesus has had the final say. Well, let me go back to that uh, time in Hungary when I was about 20 years old. Did I last? Did I make it through that time? Or did I take the wing again and leave early? My dad surprised me, and uh, he came to, to Germany on a business trip. Now, I didn't have uh, a whole lot of money, and I didn't have a vehicle, so there's no way I could get from Budapest to, to Germany. But the missionary I was living with, he knew about this, and so we traveled over to Germany, and um, he told me a little bit before, I think on the way, that, that my dad was going to be there. And one of the things I wrote in my journal was, um, well, I, com- I contemplated bailing early and going home with my dad. Because it was hard. It was tough. And I needed to be close to God each and every day, trusting Christ to fill me and to give me peace. I wrote another poem that gives you a clue of whether I stayed or not, and I'll read it in a moment. I'll, guess, I'll let you guess where I was when I wrote that poem. We're going to watch a video in a second, but uh, don't you find that the world is continually offering us its own form of peace? Have you ever ever seen that? Advertising, as advertisers are offering peace all the time. And most of us are smart enough and wise enough to see through their ruse. Some of you have seen that deodorant or that uh, laundry detergent commercial recently and how, uh, you know, that young fellow's date night would have gone a lot, lot better if he'd had a proper laundry detergent so that his collar wasn't all messed up. Remember that one? Or buy our deodorant and, and you are going to have a great life. Purchase our brand new car and your life will never be better. Speaking of that, um, hopefully we're going to be able to watch a little video about that right now. All creatures seek peace, a place in the mind that is devoid of worries. But of the eight million species that live on our planet, only one seems to have truly found it. It's a dreamlike state to live as peacefully as this creature over there, lost in pure bliss. The proud owner of a Skoda. When you have the most thoughtfully designed service care package, peace of mind comes naturally. The Skoda Shield Plus. Skoda. Simply clever. Don't you think your life would be just so much more full and peaceful if you had that car? No. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. Some of you say. Yeah. We're going to the polls in a couple of weeks, right? What promises are being made? Who's tripping over themselves to win our votes, making promises that we know 
that they can't keep. The freedom and the deliverance and peace that we want is often not what we need. Friends, the freedom and deliverance and peace that we want is often not what we need. You and I, in our humanity, in our trusting in ourselves and our world, and not trusting Christ and his peace, in that place, in our humanness, the freedom and deliverance and the peace that we want is not what we need. The peace that we look for in our humanness, apart from Christ, is not the peace that we need. It doesn't matter if we're talking about Trudeau or Horgan, Trump or Saunders, even Bonnie Henry if she was to throw her hat in the ring. All the promises that they could make are not the things that we need. Things like better health care, more money, more ha happiness, a better standard of living, less taxes. Do we need any of those things? Really? What do we really need? What do our neighbors and our co-workers and our family members really need? Yeah. They need the peace of the Messiah. They need the peace of the anointed one of God, the peace of our King, Jesus Christ. Friends, that means that Jesus has all the authority in our lives. And because we live in the West in the 21st century, we don't even understand that word authority and king. But friends, we need to get this figured out that Jesus is our king, that he rightfully and for our best is our king. And he gets to call the shots in our life. But he doesn't make us let him. We have to make that choice to surrender our lives to him as our king. Our political leaders can promise us many things, and sometimes they deliver. Things like alcohol can promise us many things. And in the beginning, it does deliver. Escapism and other things, they deliver at the beginning, and they make us feel better. They numb the pain of the past. But soon they demand more and more, while they give less and less and they begin to rob us of life and relationships and other good things. They can't give us freedom and peacefulness and rest in here. Some of you get uh, uh, Bryce Carla and his family's letter. Did any of you read that this week? Put up your hand if you read that. If you don't get his letter, um, please get a hold of them, get their letter. Um, if you can't find their address, just... Uh, office at departurebaychurch.ca, and we'll get you their address. But there is a story in there, both written and a video of a guy who was set free by Jesus from his alcoholism. And he went from a life where he didn't want to live another day to being able to have that freedom and peace in his life. A life where he was an angry man all the time, to being able to, to move away from that into a life where he's uh, where his family is not afraid to be around him anymore. They enjoy having their husband and dad around. Friends, those are the kind of things that come into our lives when we listen to Jesus and when we obey him. Jesus told us. Now listen, listen, listen. Jesus told us that when we put his words into practice, it's like building our lives on a firm foundation. Jesus said, ignore me, ignore my words, turn the other way, look for peace elsewhere. And that building that you're building your life on, it might as well be sand on the seashore, which is going to wash out in the storms of life. When I lived in Hungary, the people in what was the Soviet Union needed deliverance. And many of you will remember that in 1989, the Berlin Wall was coming down. The Romanian people were being delivered. Poland and so many other countries were coming out of communism and out of the Soviet Union. 
when our country shut down back in March, did people right here in Canada need financial deliverance? But friends, really, what are the things that we really need? Friends, all that freedom, all those other freedoms, political, financial, even emotional, without the freedom that Jesus can bring, bring doesn't count for a whole lot. Bryce and Carolyn's friend in Ireland uh, that had been drowning his life in alcohol, he began, he began to come out of that without Jesus. And he became what's known as a dry drunk. He was free from alcohol, but he still had that anger. He still had that shame and that guilt from his past. He was seeking to find that peace without Jesus. He was even crying out to God. He was doing the rosary, but he wasn't reading his Bible. He wasn't learning who Jesus is and, and, and what he calls us into and the freedom that he alone can bring us. Stay with me now, okay? Stay with me. Listen, listen. Jesus came to release us from our sin and from ourselves and from the evil one. He came to set us free from those hurts from our past, from the grief and, and, and the pain that we hold on to. I couldn't help but thinking of Isaiah 61, and many of you know this is one of my favorite passages. This is, uh, there we go. This is from Isaiah chapter 61. Uh, if you're at home or if you're in the building, would you say this together with me? The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. Isaiah penned those words hundreds of years uh, before the first century. But who quoted those words again? Anybody know? Yeah. Those poor that, that Jesus talked about when he read that script, scripture, did those poor people come out of their poverty? And those brokenhearted, were they delivered from those painful experiences? And those prisoners... Were they physically set free? Well, I, I believe that most of the time, no, they weren't. Some of, the, some of the time, Jesus did set some of those individuals free, free. But most of the time, it was in those places of despair. It was in those places of desperation and isolation and loneliness. It was in those places that Jesus came and brought freedom and pre peace through freedom. Isaiah continues, and Jesus uh, read these words as well, and let's continue uh, together to read these. To comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Friends, I would be no different than a promise-making politician if I were to tell you that trusting in Jesus Christ and following him will make all of your problems go away. Vote for Jesus. He'll give you everything you need. Is that true? Is it true? Friends, if we give our life to Jesus, if we give our devotion to, to Jesus and seek to know him better by reading his word and spending time with him, then yes, Jesus will give us what we need. But we, it might not be what we think it will be. And so, for example, are you grieving? You may still grieve. Are you wondering how the bills are going to get paid? 
you might still wonder, is your heart broken? It may still be broken, but, but, give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Devote yourself to God's anointed king, the rightful ruler of our hearts. And he will bind up your broken heart. He will give you the true freedom, even if you're behind bars. Whether those bars are made of steel or oppression or depression, he will set you free even from anxiety, from thoughts of revenge, from whatever it is that's holding you back from a life of peace, that whole life, shalom, that Jesus promises us. Jesus came to give us peace when we let him. He brings it to us. And friends, that's in any circumstance that we find ourselves in. Because here's something that's true of all of us. We're all poor and lost and blind and crippled without the new life and hope that Jesus Christ came to bring. A mother who is grieving over the loss of a child. She doesn't get her child back. But Jesus can give her peace and courage to go on. Someone who's been unjustly accused. Have you ever been accused of something that that you didn't do? And you may be brokenhearted and you may feel like you've been abandoned from people who you thought were your friends. And even there, you can be given the courage to go on and even to put aside thoughts of revenge and getting out to a place where you can pray for those who abuse you or tarnish your reputation. And coming out, of place, coming out into a place because of Jesus where you can even pray for the best for that person, that God will bless them. Friends, in our day-to-day lives, in our relationships, when we allow Jesus Christ to rule in our hearts, we become better people. A friend of mine says, better humans. More like Jesus Christ. Well, I mentioned that I wrote another poem uh, when I was in Budapest. And the first one I wrote in November. And the second one I wrote, oh, I kind of gave it away, didn't I? I wrote it in April, and it gives you a little glimpse uh, into how I was feeling at that time. I'll just give you a little uh, background. Um, Budapest is not like uh, many other major cities, a lot of concrete, not too many trees, uh, not, you know, not too much beauty to look at, a lot of gray, and uh, being a Soviet bloc country, there really was a lot of gray. But uh, Budapest has a beautiful island called Margaret, Margaret Island. And I'm trying to think of how to say that in Hungarian, but it escapes me at the moment. And it's kind of like our Stanley Park in Vancouver. It's a beautiful oasis in the middle of the city. And so this is my poem that I wrote in April of 1990. The trees are growing all around. I see it every day. Margaret Island looks wonderful. The grass, the flowers, the leaves. I'm still here, it's plain to see. God has kept me in this place. And maybe in a year or two, who knows? Let's wait and see. There's another stanza to that poem, and if you'd like to hear it, uh, my number's on the screen there. You can text me or you can send me an email. Did I stay or, or did I go? Well, I stayed. God kept me in that place. Friends, when you and I continue to put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ, we will experience his peace. It might not be in the moment. might not be that day or that week or possibly even that season. But God will bring us out into a place of peace. When I wrote that first poem in in November, and I said, God is good and God is just to us. He'll never fail. I was writing from a heart of sadness and, and loneliness and not a whole lot of peace. 
And yet, even in that place, I was able to remember that I had seen God time and again come through. I was able to worship even in that hard place. <clears throat> so where are you at right now? What does shalom look like for you today? Is Jesus calling the shots in your life? Is the peace of Christ ruling in your heart? I want you to just take some time right now, wherever you are, to stop and to pray and talk to God about the peace that he's given you in the past, to be grateful for that, and also the peace that you need right now. So just go ahead and do that right now in the silence of your heart. Let's say this verse together one more time. Let the shalom of Christ, our Messiah, be your heart's decision, decision maker, since as parts of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Who will you share with this week about something that God's done in your life where he's given you peace? Who will you share that with this week to ask them to pray with you for God's peace in your life? <clears throat> 